hello welcome back to my channel thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and thank you for keeping your notifications on i hope uh, these videos are useful to you and your colleagues as well i am dr sridhar kalyana sundaram consultant neonatologist and i work in dubai Uh, for those of you who are uh, new to the channel i would request you to go through the playlists and there are videos for both parents and for medics and the playlists are organized separately in the features so uh, we are continuing the nrp series after a little break when we did the ventilation series of course we will continue that series as well shortly so in this video we'll be looking at chest compressions and medications so you can refer to these previous videos in the playlist and i'll put the link in the description below uh, chest compressions and medications are uh, very important aspects of the uh, neonatal resuscitation and all of you are familiar with that as well so we will go through some important points this is the algorithm which you can refer to in the initial uh, video which was on the algorithm of nrp as well so essentially we are focusing on this part where uh, despite effective uh, ventilation the heart rate remains below 60 beats per minute you start chest compression and if this patch is compression it stays below you go for medication a quick word on oxygen management so uh, the free flow oxygen if you want to give it's given at 30% and the flow is set at uh, 10 liters per minute and when you start ippv the initial uh, fao2 for uh, term babies or babies more than 35 weeks can be uh, 21% and for babies who are premature or less than 35 weeks in this case 21 to 30% there is a separate video that i have made in the oxygen series on uh, oxygen management in the labor room there is also professor ola's talk on the topic which you can watch on the channel as well so i would put the links for these as well always use pulse oximetry to guide oxygen concentration and uh, the main point here i wanted to stress regarding the chest compression is that we should use 100% oxygen during compression the main reason is that the circulation is not effective so the pulse oximeter is not going to give you an effective reading to titrate the oxygenation and these are the sickest babies so there is little room for error and getting their oxygenation up as soon as possible to get the heart going is very important so this is the sequence i showed you in the algorithm so after you have given effective positive pressure ventilation that moves the chest you give that for 30 seconds and reassess so if the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute at that stage you continue ppv uh, till the spontaneous effort returns if the heart rate is between 60 to 99 you reassess the ventilation continue to do the ventilation corrective steps if needed and uh, monitor every 30 seconds if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute you assess ventilation and ventilation corrective steps because even at this stage you do need to maintain your uh, effective ventilation you insert an alternative airway intubation is strongly recommended in a baby where you need chest compressions however if you are alone and you cannot intubate continue with resuscitation measures with ppv and chest compression because more important not to delay rather than waiting for someone to intubate if there is no improvement we go on to 100% oxygen and chest compressions so we prefer to use the two thumb method the two finger method is still taught in the basic life support and it does have a role when you are a single resuscitator or one of your team you are two people resuscitating and the other member has gone to get help and the baby is intubated then you can use the two finger method but the two finger method it's uh, likely to tire you out more the effectiveness is less as different people bend the finger to a different level the effectiveness of the compression is not predictable as well and uh, that is the only situation you have an intubated baby you are alone and you want to maintain chest compression and ippv together on your own then you can use a two finger method so the nrp now stresses mainly on the two thumb technique use 100% oxygen as i said so as soon as you decide on the need to chest compress start chest compressions ask your colleague to make it 100% oxygen so this step is often missed when i teach on the nrp many of the trainees forget this step so please don't forget it 
and uh, the compression is more effective when you deliver it from the head of the bed so try to position yourself there uh, and it also allows room uh, for the umbilical venous catheter to be inserted so most of these babies are intubated so you can now take over the head end of the bed it allows more room for the umbilical venous catheter to be inserted and the person bagging can do it from the side because the ET tube has been secured the cardiac monitor is recommended and uh, don't rely on the saturation readings when you are doing chest compression do not document this reading as a proper reading for the baby mention that the monitor readings are being observed but not documented because the baby is needing chest compression you continue for 60 seconds prior to checking head heart rate it's very important to minimize the interruptions um, the aim of the chest compression is to compress the chest to deliver oxygenated blood to the coronaries to try and kick start the heart so the aim in newborn resuscitation is to kick start the heart rather than to keep giving blood to the uh, brain unlike in adult resuscitation where till we get effective uh, shock the heart may not come back if you give oxygenated blood to the coronaries we may be able to kick start the heart in babies effective ventilation is essential before we start compression for the same reason because we need oxygenated blood and we'll only get that if the ventilation has started properly Intubation is strongly recommended at this stage to make sure ventilation is effective and maintained well when we do the chest compression and 100% oxygen as we mentioned as well. So the AP diameter previously we used to say in terms of a quarter inch or a two, I mean a three to four centimeters uh, to press and now we took uh, half of an inch sorry half inch or uh, three to four centimeters for the babies now we talk in terms of the AP diameter of the chest so one third of the AP diameter of the chest is where uh, you aim to compress to the uh, internipple line is still a good landmark um, lower third of the sternum uh, should be avoided so the mid sternum one finger breadth below the internipple line avoid the ziffy sternum so uh, you have to compress to one third of the AP diameter it's very important to allow adequate recoil so the filling happens in between your relaxation so don't keep compressing the chest in between and the cadence of one two three breathe one two three breathe works well because you aim to deliver 100 to 120 beats per minute and 30 uh, breaths per minute so uh, we have to reassess as i said every 60 seconds or a minute to avoid interruption this is because uh, each time you interrupt and restart it takes 5 to 10 compressions to reach the peak effectiveness of the flow this has been analyzed on invasive monitoring in the babies where you have an arterial line and this is actually recommended if there is a baby needing life support uh, CPR when they are having invasive monitoring already for example in the NICU it's very important to switch roles every 2 minutes to avoid tiring so the team should work together in the next video we will discuss team working and important aspects related to that and that will be the final video in the NRP series. We have to stop compression once the heart rate is over 60 beats per minute but you have to be alert you may need to compress again if uh, for any reason the baby drifts down. After stopping the compression you have to go back to reassessing every 30 seconds and uh, we have to look at weaning the oxygen because you have increased it to 100% oxygen. So once the circulation returns the saturation readings can be relied on and you start weaning the FAO2 fairly quickly as allowed by the baby's condition and maintain ongoing care, maintain this ventilation, update the parents and you document appropriately. So in terms of medication, it's only two medications that we need to remember. So epinephrine, intravenous is preferred or intraosseous if you are not able to get the umbilical venous line. Endotracheal route is not preferred because the dosage is not reliably delivered. The dose of uh, epinephrine that's given endotracheally is higher. So uh, for the intravenous dose we give uh, 0 0.1 milligram per ml 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 ml per kilogram so for a 3 kilogram baby you can give around uh, 0 0.9 ml close to 1 ml of the 0 0.1 milligram per ml previously we used to say 1 in 10,000 adrenaline but or epinephrine but we now stick to the term 0 0.1 milligram per ml to avoid confusion uh, so the ET dose is used at 0 0.5 to 1 ml per kilogram and you don't need a flush for the endotracheal route. If you do secure the IV axis even a minute after the ET dose, you don't need to wait for the 3 minutes, you can give the repeat dose immediately after. After we have given the first IV dose, you maintain effective CPR, reassess every minute. 
and if the circulation doesn't return you repeat the IV dose of epinephrine every three minutes you may consider correcting the HNTs, uh, tension pneumothorax, correcting of hypovolemia uh, and so on. In terms of volume replacement, normal saline is the volume replacement of choice and we give 10 ml per kilo of bolus intravenous. O negative blood should be available in situations where blood loss is likely to be the reason as if the baby is hypotensive they are less likely to respond. Naloxone is not considered a resuscitation drug though there are some scenarios where we may use it to reduce the time uh, you keep the baby on ventilation. Bicarbonate is not a resuscitation drug as well. It's only used in scenarios uh, as part of the HNTs where acidosis is causing a poor response to your initial dose of adrenaline and you have documented metabolic acidosis. Dextrose can be considered if hypoglycemia is noted in prolonged resuscitation and it is not a resuscitation drug as well. So it's only normal saline and 0.1 mg per ml of epinephrine that are used for the resuscitation. So I hope this video is useful. I request you to review the previous videos in the NRP series. Uh, do subscribe, keep your notifications on if not already done and please do share. Appreciate your watching this. Uh, thank you.